Hi everybody, I'm Cynthia Garrett and welcome to the mini sessions and for those of you who've been joining us, you know that we're on this set because these sessions are coming to you from South Africa and um, although we're having a global dialogue about faith in the world, we are all alike and that's the yeah. most amazing thing about doing these sessions from mm -hmm. different places. Um, they're, the one thing that connects us all in common is our love of the Lord and the fact that we're all people and we have pains and we have victories and we have dreams and hopes and that is the most inspirational thing I find actually about sitting down with different people from everywhere. So on today's session, I have two young women who are like now like my two nieces. I just love them <laughs> to death. They are Angelique Boshoff Duprain yes. and Chanel Boshoff. Oh, now, yes. some of you in South Africa or actually around the world who know CRC Church, which is headed by Pastor At Boshoff and Noretta Boshoff, um, may know of their parents or of the ministry. But I have these two young ladies here because I think that the seed in them for young people that God is birthing is incredibly important. And I have such a heart to reach the young and the youth around the world. And I just think that youth have a really unique challenge mm -hmm. yeah. living out their Christianity today. So we're going to sit down on this session and we're going to chat. Welcome. Thank you so much, Pastor Cynthia. <laughs> Once again, it's such an honor to be here with you today. Um, yeah. So as you know, obviously, I'm Angelique. I'm the oldest of three children. Yes. And then we have a brother named David. Um, he's 11 months younger than me. And then my sister, Chanel, and she's three and a half years younger than myself. You're the baby of the group, huh? Yes, yes I am the baby <laughs> of the group. And I also just want to thank you so much for this incredible opportunity and also mm -hmm. for truly believing in the youth. And yeah. also, since we've met you, just inspiring us and motivating us and pushing us. And I really am so excited for what God has in store for all of the youth out there. Yeah, well, you guys... I'm so impressed from the second I said hello with your love of the Lord, you know, and I guess to start, how did you guys come to fall in love with the Lord? I know, you know, you can grow up in a pastor's home yeah. and there's lots of kids who don't fall in love with the Lord or they have their own moment of rebellion mm -hmm. or whatever it is, right? So how did you guys come to embrace your own faith? Because it really is your own faith. Definitely. You know? Okay. So obviously, you know, we were born into um, a pastor's home. And my parents were so intentional about us having our own relationship with the Lord. They never tried to pressurize us. Um, they only encouraged us. And obviously, church wasn't an option. So they encouraged us to always go to church. We always had to be at church. And then they really encouraged us to have our own relationship with the Lord. They encouraged us. They led by example um, to read our Bibles, to pray. And I remember giving my life to the Lord officially because, I mean, as a child, you know, you have to get to a point, especially growing up in a Christian home, you have to get to a point of understanding what it means to actually give your heart to the Lord. So I remember my brother and I, because we're similar in age, um, every time my dad would do an altar call and invite people to give their hearts to the Lord, um, my brother and I would actually run to the front. We'd be the first ones there every week. Like, if you told a lie, you would think, I have to give my heart to the Lord. <laughs> and I remember my first real understanding was when I was about four years old, um, I, I truly understood what it meant to give my heart to Jesus. And after that point, I never felt the need to give my heart to Jesus again. And I was actually um, filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time when I was three years old. Um, we were in a prayer meeting with my dad. And um, the next minute, I just like lay, started lying on the floor. And I didn't know anything about this at the age of three. And I started laughing uncontrollably. And my dad actually brought the microphone to me in church and, and he said, Ange, what's happening to you? And at that age, I actually had the understanding that it was the Holy Spirit. And I said, Daddy, it's, the Holy Spirit is touching me. And so I would say my whole journey, mine personally started from that, from that time. And then when I gave my heart to the Lord, and then I remember when I was five years old, I asked my dad specifically to baptize me in water. And at that point, we had a baptism bath on the stage of our church. And I remember going and being baptized on the stage in front of everyone. And then after that, I really wanted to receive the gift of speaking in tongues, um, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I clearly remember receiving that at the age of seven. And yeah, the rest is history. And that's how I would say <laughs> my journey and my relationship with the Lord started. And 
Yeah, just having an awesome family, a family that believes mm -hmm. in you, parents that believe in you, wow. parents that support you, parents that push you, parents that love you, parents that are always there for you, um, parents that are there to answer any questions that we had. We always felt like we could go up to them and ask them any questions that we weren't mm -hmm. sure of. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was for me, Chanel. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think my journey was very similar. Obviously, growing up in the same home, and I had the greatest examples because my parents truly have been the greatest examples because everything that they have preached, they truly do live out, which I believe that is where we've been so blessed because you see so many people where they say certain things, but they don't actually apply it to their own lives, where we've seen with our parents every single thing that they speak or that they teach the youth and that they teach people, yeah. they really do live in their personal lives. And I think while being able to actually, while being the youngest, I've been able to see yeah. how my sister lived out and how my brother also lived out and how they were incredible examples. So I think where I truly understood and gave my life to Jesus, I also used to go forward and I had a cousin <laughs> that was like my twin which he's six weeks older than me, but we would go forward all the time. And then one day, I also realized I was about five years old and I had this encounter with God. And from that moment, I wanted to live my life for God for the rest of my life. And I always wanted to set the example and be different because I saw as growing up as a teenager, I also saw what certain decisions that my friends made. And also from my parents explaining to us what they had been through, um, I learned that I don't want to do the same things. I want to be yeah. different. I want to stand out and make a difference, leave or make history in the world by making an impact, by telling God's story, and yeah. especially by what I'd been through. Because as a young person, I battled with many things in my life. I had struggled with many health issues, a lot of things that um, I believe the enemy really had tried to attack me in, in many ways. And I believe my faith was truly tested through that. But through that, I, God really became real for me. And yeah. I'm just so excited because I believe if kids just realize that, and especially teenagers, if they realize how important God is and you cannot do any of this without Him, then they will be able to live this journey and truly want to yeah. see Jesus from a different perspective and in a different light. You know, I, what was it like the moment that you encountered God? And I'll tell you why I want to know this, because... Many people around the world always say, this is their one, you know, slam on being a believer. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand how if you have problems, yeah. then you could, you know, you find God to be a crutch. And the thing is, I always say that's not true. Mm -hmm. Yes, many people come to the Lord in their problems, but, but many people know the Lord mm -hmm. way before they ever have problems. So you clearly had no problems. You yeah. clearly, <laughs> as a child, you know, you're, yeah. as a child, you're pure and life is good. Yeah. So at five years old, what was the encounter with the Lord like? Like what shifted you and got you? I think I had two different encounters with God where I really saw him be so real in my life. And the first one, when I was five years old, I think when I just experienced, I think because Growing up, the greatest miracle that I realized to ever witness is someone giving their life to God. And that moment where they have that God encounter where something changes because there's just something about it where um, the altar call is called and someone goes forward because Jesus publicly died for us. So I believe that you publicly need to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And once you publicly do that, I believe there's such a shift. And I get to see because in church also we stand in front with the altar calls and immediately you see the greatest experience is seeing yeah. someone where they come in and they've got this dull look in their eyes and yeah. as soon as they come yeah. forward and you see life immediately comes into yeah. their eyes and I think a burden that, is lifted yes a burden a is lifted immediately yeah, yeah. Totally. and I think at five years old that encounter the experience was you just kind of know that God is there and you experience it becomes so real and so genuine to to you and I think that's where many people if they don't truly mean it, they don't really have that experience. And I mean, being a Christian, it doesn't mean you're going to go, your life is going to be so easy. You're never going to face obstacles. I mean, I faced so many obstacles, so many challenges in my life. And I realized that even facing those obstacles and challenges without yeah. God, you wouldn't do it. And um, with my next experience that I had with God, I was about 20, where God really revealed himself to me. And I think from going through so many things, doubting him, starting doubting myself completely, having so many insecurities because of things that happened in my life. Then where God just realized I had this one moment, one touch from God, and my whole life changed immediately because I realized that He truly is there. He's that person that sticks closer than a brother. He's always there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake yeah. you. And I think that's the revelation that you have to have because as a young kid, mm. seeing that 
you see it through how your parents live their lives out yeah. and how your sister lives her life out and your brother. But I mean, you have to experience that for yourself. And I think yeah. going through all the trials that I went through, you end up seeing how real God is just by experiencing yeah. it and always knowing that you are never alone. But I think you really have to experience that yeah. for yourself to actually believe that. And to experience that, that, yeah. that unconditional love, there's yeah. nothing like it. When you give your heart to Jesus, you know, we know that when Jesus ascended into the heavens, he mm -hmm. sent the Holy Spirit down to be our helper, to Amen. be our friend, to always be there with us. So when you give your heart to Jesus, then you have the Holy Spirit with you. Amen. He's always there. He sticks closer to you than a brother. He sticks closer to you than a father. He becomes your father. Mm -hmm. He becomes your best friend. And it's really, it's just amazing because you feel his tangible presence with you the whole time. Yeah. You know that no matter what you go through, no matter what you even do, that God loves you, that the Holy Spirit is there for you. He'll never yes. leave you like Chanel said. He will yeah. never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah, it yeah. so has to become your own thing. Definitely. You know, I grew up, um, I went to Catholic schools most of my life. And, you know, although my family wasn't, you know, like my, wasn't really pushing and guiding in a certain direction, my mom knew one thing and she said, well, you know, if they go to Catholic school, they'll at least get a groundedness in, 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 in God. Mm -hmm. and, but it's interesting because it became real for me in the moment that I encountered him yeah. also. And that's yeah. really important, you know, I think for young people, for all of you young people out there who are yeah. watching, um, and old people who are mentoring or raising and parenting yeah. and affecting young people's lives. you. You've got to have that personal encounter. Yeah. And if you ask for it, he'll give it to you. Yeah. And have a relationship with Jesus. I yeah. think what happens is so many people just see Christianity as this religion. Mm -hmm. So it's a mundane day by day. I read my Bible. I pray. I go to church on a Sunday. But they don't realize that it's actually a relationship yeah. with Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. He's there for you. So it's not just a one-way conversation or a one-way mm -hmm. relationship, right? He wants you to talk to him. And then Amen. we need to be yeah. open to hear back from him. Because Amen. if you l allow him to, he will speak back to you, whether it be through people, whether it be through the word, whether mm -hmm. it be through visions and dreams, which we know doesn't happen that often. But if, if we seek him, then he seeks us. Amen. Right? If we draw closer to him, then he draws closer to us. Yeah. And that's what's so important for the young people of today to truly understand that it's not about a religion. Yeah. It's about having a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And He is there to love us. He is there to be there for us. He's not there to judge us or condemn yeah. us, yeah. right? And if young people can understand that, then we always say that, you know, our young people, the kids, are going to be a super Jesus generation. Amen. And that's our heart for them, for them to grow up and to not have any excuses of not having a relationship with God or no, Christianity is boring because... Christianity is not boring, it's fun. right? Amen. Christianity is amazing. When you have that true encounter Amen. and that true relationship with Jesus, it's just, it's just so amazing. So, so let's, let's, talk, let's talk about the youth because you guys, you guys are very intentional at CRC around, yeah. the, around the world. I, I mean, I, I, I was so impressed speaking at Dream Week this year because in getting to experience the ministry, and in actually getting to experience your hearts for the young, that's Amen. what really just drew me in. Like, hold up a second. <laughs> how are these two girls so on fire for Jesus? And how are they so passionate about the young? And I see the way they, they run up to you guys. They, they hug you. That you can see that you've gotten into relationship yeah. with them. And relationship is so important in the church because so many young people they're lacking maybe relationship structures. They're mm -hmm. lacking people to shepherd them and disciple them. Mm -hmm. So let's start w with the young kids and move to the older kids okay. because Angelique, mm -hmm. your responsibility is uh, the younger kids through fifth grade, yeah? yeah? And then Chanel, you take over sixth grade through high school. To ninth grade. To ninth grade, okay. Yeah. So, and these are clearly different age groups. Yeah. So Angelique, what's the most, um, I guess the most relevant way that you could say this is how we reach young children in this age group? Okay, so we start with kids from the age of one up until fifth grade, which is 11 years old. And um, we are so intentional about connecting them with the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. with the presence of God. So we start with, um, 20, at 21 months, we start with a kids' church program with them. So we start ministering to them, we pray for them, we lay hands on them, we teach them how to pray. Obviously in praise and worship, we really teach them 
to connect with Jesus, right? Because in the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. Amen. And then with our, our older kids, so with our three to six-year-olds, we, we, we call them the tiny towners. And our grade one through grade five, we call grade one to grade three, we call kingdom kids. And then grade four and five, we call champions for Christ. And so we have, um, it's actually an international kids church program that we're using. It's really amazing from Metro Ministries, but we've South Africanized it. And so we have permission to do that. And we've crc fight it, if I can put it that way, yes. um, where we've really brought in the Holy Spirit, where we've really brought in prayer and the DNA of CRC. So we teach them a lesson every single week. And um, we really, our, our lessons are very practical where we teach them how to go and do a John 3.16, how mm -hmm. to go and reach their world, that they are a light in their world. We teach them that Amen. God does love them. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. And, and the most important thing that we, we really try to do is to make every single child that comes to Kids Church feel loved and feel accepted. Because we really see that we have kids from all walk of life um, come to Kids Church. We have kids from the wealthiest to the poorest, mm -hmm. from all spheres of life, from the whitest, if I can say, to the absolute blackest, right? We have literally kids from all walks of life. And um, we even have kids that come on our buses. And if they, if they happen to miss a bus, they'll literally walk to mm -hmm. church yeah. every week because it's a place where they feel loved. It's a place where they feel accepted. And so we really, we really teach them how important it is to come to church every week so that they can get fed, so that we can help disciple them. We're very intentional with our volunteers to mm -hmm. get to know the kids, to love on the, on the kids, um, so that we can help them reach the destinies that God has intended for them because God has a special destiny, Amen. a unique destiny for every single child, for every single one of us. Yeah. And that's really what we try to teach the kids and also to really encounter the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we teach them, you know, um, about the Holy Spirit and that they're not too young to pray in tongues. They're Amen. not too young to yeah. reach their world. They're not too young to reach adults mm -hmm. because I think many times kids feel Oh, I'm too young to do anything. I'm too young to, to reach my family. I'm too young to reach my neighborhood. No, but then we have kids that literally start home cells, mm -hmm. which are small groups, and they invite their aunts, their uncles, their grandparents oh. to it. We have kids that we've had so many testimonies of families coming and telling us, you know, we joined the church because of Kids Church. My, friend, my, my child came here with one of their friends and they like dragged us along. Or my kid makes sure that they are ready the day before that. They know their memory verse for the week. They wake up early. They make sure we awake so that we never miss church. So we're also really intentional about really teaching the kids how important it is to come to church every week so that they can also get their families and their parents to realize yes. how important it is mm -hmm. to come to church because church is the place where you will get discipled. Church is the place where you will find vision. Church is the place where, where, where you'll really discover the destiny that God has for your life. And yes. so, yeah, at Kids Church, you know, that is, that is just some of the things that we're very intentional about. But I'm going to give over to Chanel now with the older ones. Okay, so sixth grade through ninth grade. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the things before, before you kind of tell me, sort of, Chanel, how you guys reach that age group, one of the things that comes to my mind listening to you guys speak is, is what my son always says. There is no junior Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Literally. Amen. There's no junior Literally. Holy Spirit. Literally. The Bible says that yeah. we should always have that childlike faith. Amen. Right. And working with the kids, working with the junior youth, working with the kids. You just see, literally, they believe everything Amen. you say to them. Yeah, if and they're experiencing pray, it in, yeah. ways most, in ways adults often become blocked to. Literally. Amen. So mm -hmm. they come up to you and they say, ma'am, will you pray for my mom to get a job? She doesn't have a job, so you pray for them. Mm -hmm. And like the yeah. next week or two weeks later, they come, and we've had kids come with tears in their eyes. Ma'am, ma'am. Remember, you prayed for my mom to have yes. a job. She has a job. Yeah. She has a oh, job. Yes. Thank you. I believe God is so very, have, he wants to answer the prayers yeah, of amen. the children. That childlike faith, it yeah. just teaches us again, you know, to have that childlike faith that anything is possible. Okay, so sixth to ninth graders, yeah. it's a whole different challenge. It is completely different. I think one of the biggest things is we realized that there was such a need with this age group because so many people don't focus specifically on this age group. So we used to have kids church until seventh grade and then we used to have youth from nine, um, eighth grade until twelfth grade. And then we realized there was such a, this is such a vulnerable age where they start getting polluted and they start getting exposed to the things of the world. And what we, then we started realizing, so three years ago in the beginning of 2015, 
I was actually moved up to Pretoria to start junior youth. And we realized God just placed me in this place. Moved from Bloemfontein. I moved from yeah. Bloemfontein to Pretoria. And God just showed us that we need to focus on the specific age group. And mm -hmm. immediately when we started, we had to realize we had to start everything from scratch. We had to figure out what we need to do. And finally, we started, we focused on a Sunday with the grade sixes and sevens, where we replicate exactly what the main auditorium does. So what our main church does, and we have the same departments, everything, where we do our own media, our own creative arts, where we have our ushers ministry. We have 16 different sub-departments. And then God really showed us that there is... No, no one is too young to be raised up as a leader, to be raised up as a volunteer. So what we realized, the 8th and ninth graders, we really started focusing on being intentional with raising them up as leaders and as volunteers. And then it, we just saw how, what an impact it has made and how real Jesus started being to them. And even though being exposed to, because I mean, in junior youth, we've actually had gangs come to junior youth yeah. where they've wanted to kill each other. They brought knives and they wanted to stab each other in junior youth and everything. And how we started targeting the leaders of the gangs and we started believing in them and we told them, we believe in you. God believes in you. Jesus believes in you. He created you for a time such as this and you are predestined for greatness. And because of that, just by believing in them, showing them how much you love them, they completely changed. And all of those gang leaders started coming to church. They got saved. They gave their lives to God. And through that, I mean, they've impacted so many of their friends' lives. They've brought their friends to church. And I mean, through that, we've seen so many, we've been intentional because the whole thing about our church is being intentional with discipling. Yeah. So once someone gives their life to God on a Sunday, then on a Monday, we have a 24-hour follow-up where we actually follow up on those the teenagers and the preteens and where we get them discipled and we get them into a home cell which is a small group each one of them and then they are raised up to become leaders and that is exactly what our mission statement of our church is mend the nets the catch will be great to train and release every member for ministry caring for evangelizing and discipling our community and that's exactly what we are there for every member needs to get involved go out evangelizing and that's what we are so intentional about evangelizing, teaching our kids how to do John 3.16. Mm -hmm. And one thing what we've really been intentional with is teaching them prayer because prayer is yeah. so important and prayer is powerful. Yes. And that's something that my dad has always taught us. Revival is birthed and maintained through prayer. Yeah. So you can never stop praying. Once yeah. prayer delays, revival decays. Yeah. And that's something that I believe is so important for the teenagers out there, the youth out there, to actually realize how important your relationship with God first. That's the most important relationship that you can ever have. Yeah. And then through that, really being intentional with your prayer life, praying, asking God, thanking God. Because I think that's what we've really seen where the teenagers and the preteens have really started building their relationship with prayer. I mean, we've had, um, at the beginning of the year, someone, it, or it was announced that prayer had to be taken out of the schools and Christianity yeah. had to be taken Jeez. out of the schools in yeah. South Africa. So we decided we're going to stand up against this and all the teenagers stood with us and we were like, yes, they might be able to keep us out of the schools, but they cannot keep the teenagers and the yeah, kids amen. out of the schools. So one yes. thing God really showed us that we have to mobilize the teenagers and we have to show them and the kids mm -hmm. how to pray. And we started prayer walks in the schools. And since then, I mean, we see so many kids starting yeah. their own prayer walks out from our youngest, 12 years old already, yeah. where they're starting their own prayer walks. They've gotten teachers saved. Yeah. Teachers are joining. The principals of the schools have started joining. It's rebellion for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> <go down. laughs> and I mean, it's so amazing to see how much fire the teenagers yeah. have caught and the passion mm -hmm. that they have. And I mean... I really believe there's so many labels that the world places upon teenagers and kids. Mm -hmm. And out there they see, and there's something that I preach on, actually labels are limiting and God is exceeding, which exceeding actually means breaking the bounds of limitations upon your life, which we really started teaching them that and how to rip the labels off of your life. And through that, seeing your Christ identity, who God has made you to be. And I think that is one of the most vital and important roles that we play is for kids to actually see who they are in Christ, their identity in Christ. And through that, they are able to conquer anything. So we're teaching them and focus to be loud and unashamed for Jesus, to go out, be radical, to yeah. be history makers by telling his story, because there's nothing more powerful than telling his story in our world, Jesus' story and teaching the teenagers to do that. So I think that has been one of the most, the biggest successes with our youth ministry is being intentional, discipling them, yeah. teaching them the importance of their relationship with Jesus, but also that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And that is why we are here, to come and seek and save the lost, yeah. to come 
for the lost people, to get people to be on fire for Jesus, to give yeah. their lives to God. And through that, no one will be able to shut us up. Our voices yeah. will become the loudest. And I believe that's what we need to do in our schools mm -hmm. in order to turn our schools around because God showed us that the 12, the 13-year-olds and the older kids, they will be the ones to turn their schools around from inside out and nothing will stop them. So, mm -hmm. And that is why we have to be intentional. So I think that's where we've really been intentional and raising them up as leaders from such mm -hmm. a young age, showing them that we believe in them even though no one else does. Yeah. God believes in them. That's right. why yeah. He predestined us. And that's exactly what yeah. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Yeah. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed yeah. you as a prophet over the nations. And that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite scriptures because he knew us before we were born. He yeah. predestined us. He knew exactly. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what we tell the teenagers mm -hmm. that they need to know. God knew us before we were born and he has predestined us for yeah. great things already. And they need to start seeing that and believing that. Yeah. And God yeah. doesn't have any favorites. Amen. No, right? He all. has a great destiny for everyone. He's Amen. predestined each one of us for greatness. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah he has yeah. a plan. Amen. Yeah. Has a plan, and they're good plans. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm listening to you you speak, and I'm kind of chuckling inside because the two of you tried to convince me that you're nervous and that <laughs> and that and that you you know you you don't really like to speak, and I'm like, you actually tried to tell me that you were shy and and but you and you preach. Yeah, I mean, well, you preach. I mean, you both preach. I, I guess you can't really escape it in the Bosch family. But, but I mean, you, you do. And, and I know that was a bit of a challenge for you, right? You that were afraid to start teaching to the t or, or preaching to the teenagers. But what made, you, what made you get past your fear? Okay, so what basically happened when I was young, I'm going to share a little bit of my testimony. But when I was younger, I had an accident where I hurt my, I did a backflip into the swimming pool and I landed with my head on the side of the pool mm. and I knocked myself yeah. out. And then Jeez. I had a dream to become an Olympic athlete with running and swimming. And I mean, I made essays with running, swimming, biathlon. I was a netball player. And then one day I swam free state championships, which is our state's um, swimming championships. And my body went completely spastic in the swimming pool. So they had to take me out. And from that day, they told me I would never be able to swim again. I'd never be able to exercise in my life again. So I went to so many different doctors and I went from doctor to doctor to doctor and everyone gave up hope with me. They said they've never seen a case like this before. So many people diagnosed me with so many different things. And so I had a few different accidents. I had a go-karting accident too, which affected my coccyx. So I bent my coccyx in and then I wasn't able to sit properly for three years. I couldn't sit longer than half an hour for three Jeez. years. And so I had a lot of setbacks and as a child I was very sick and then finally they diagnosed me with uh, autoimmune disease and they, and they told me I'm never going to be able to exercise. So I went to so much rehab and physio and I mean it's been 12 years. It's been 12 years now in November where I've really been faced with these different challenges. And I mean I was so good with academics. So for me it was extremely crucial and important to be number one in everything that I did. And I was very hard on myself, extremely driven, very focused. And so many, then I worked with a rehabilitation center where they told me by grade, by 12th grade, you'll be 100% fine. And then I had a dream to become a doctor. So my dreams of, Olymp of the Olympics were shattered and I had a dream to, be, to study medicine. And through that, I think slowly but surely as so many disappointments came in my life and I started becoming good at something, then my dreams were shattered. And then I wanted to study medicine and certain parts of my brain, my memory side of my brain was also affected and things. And I think from there, I also, but when I had to fill in my application forms for medicine, then all peace completely left me. And deep down inside, I always actually knew that I would go into ministry. I always knew, but I kind of wanted to avoid it because I knew what the sacrifice was. Yeah. And mm. then I'm going to stop you right there. Yes. I'm going to stop you right there because this is a good place mm. to stop at the disappointment it's the disappointments, yeah. right? The disappointments that sometimes push us into our destiny. Definitely. So I know you've got to be loving their passion. So we're <laughs> going to take a break here. I'm going to see you guys next week with Chanel and Angelique Boshoff, and we're going to continue this conversation. I'm Cynthia Garrett. You're watching the mini sessions. I'll see you next week.